Hello, today we are going to talk about factors that will keep traders busy. The market resumed its uptrend after a week-long hiatus and closed the week at a record high on November 25th with a 1% gain. This was in response to a rise in global counterparts and rising hopes that the Federal Reserve will slow down the pace of rate hikes at its upcoming policy meetings. The sentiment was lifted as well. By falling U.S. bond yields, buying by FIs, and falling oil prices. The BSE Sussex revitalized in excess of 600 focuses to 62,294, and the Nifty 50 got around 200 focuses to 18,513. While the more extensive business sectors were likewise in real life after late solidification, with the clever mid-cap 100 and small-cap 100 files acquired then 2% each. The market was supported by stocks of auto, banks, technology, infrastructure, oil and gas, and energy, while power and real estate stocks were under pressure. Experts predicted that momentum and consolidation would continue into the following week, with the nifty likely reaching its intraday record high of 18,604. With a focus on domestic data on second quarter GDP and monthly auto sales and global queues, both the bank Nifty and the BSE Sussex regained their prior highs. The market will remain volatile in the short term due to the lack of strong fundamental triggers in the future, according to Vinod Nair, head of research at GeoJIT Financial Services. The market's future trajectory will be influenced by the Fed Chair's speech, which is scheduled for the following week and the release of other significant macroeconomic data. In the midst of all, Ajit Mishra, VP Specialized Exploration at Religar Broking said it would vital to perceive how the more extensive market support works out as that would assume a basic part in reinforcing the pattern. The following are 10 key factors that will keep dealers occupied one week from now. 1. Data on the quarterly GDP The most important factor to keep an eye on the following week is the quarterly economic growth rate, which will be released on Wednesday. The majority of experts anticipate that the economy will expand by more than 6% in the September FY23 quarter, which is lower than the 13.5% growth rate recorded in the previous quarter, supported by increased demand and a return to normal economic activity. Rahul Bajoria, MD and head of EM Asia Economics at Barclays, stated, We expect India's Q2 FI23 GDP to rise 6.4% YOY. We think a resilient domestic backdrop and pent-up demand continued to prop up India's growth, especially in the tertiary sector, even as external headwinds rose through the quarter. In addition, he stated that the 6.4% growth forecast for Q2 FI23 is in line with their expectation that India's economy will expand by 7% in FI22-23, despite the slight downside risk. The Sanpi Global Manufacturing PMI data for November will be released on Thursday, in addition to GDP, fiscal deficit, and infrastructure output for October. Foreign exchange reserves for the week ending November 25th and bank loan and deposit growth for the fortnight ending November 18th will be released on Friday. 2. November automobile sales monthly figures on automobile sales that will be released later in the week will also be watched. Experts stated that passenger vehicle sales are likely to be supported by improving semiconductor supply in November. However, the sustainability of demand for two-wheelers following the holiday season is an important factor to keep an eye on. As a result, companies in the automobile industry such as Tata Motors, Maruti Suzuki India, Mahindra & Mahindra, Iker Motors, Hero Motocorp, Ashok Leland, TVS Motor, and Bajaj Auto, among others, will be the primary focus. The Nifty Auto Index has lost more than 3% so far this month but it has remained in the 1,000-point range for the past four months. 3. Oil Costs The amendment in oil costs was one of explanations behind reinforcing market opinion last week as it brings expect back off in expansion and financial shortage worries alongside further developing. Edge strain for corporates Also, experts said the RBI may breathe a sigh of relief as the rate hike pace may slow. 
Friday's settlement of international benchmark Brent crude futures at $83.63 a barrel was down 4.5% week over week due to rising COVID cases in China, the world's largest oil importer. And concerns about the outlook for demand. Sentiment was also impacted by the G7 and European nations debate regarding a cap on the price of Russian oil between $65 to $70 a barrel. Oil prices are at a 10-month low right now, which is great news for India, an oil-importing nation. Four data points on the global economy investors will keep a close eye on the U.S. GDP second estimates for the third quarter, the November unemployment rate, and monthly manufacturing PMI data that are due next week. The following are important economic data points to keep an eye on next week. Aside from that, investors will pay attention to speeches by a number of Federal Reserve officials, including Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Especially since FOMC minutes raised hopes for a slower rate hike pace at subsequent meetings. 5. FI flow The steady purchases made in November by foreign investors appear to have improved market confidence, given that India's economy is growing at the fastest rate in the world and bond yields. Are falling. Experts believe the flow will likely continue in the coming weeks. In November, FIs bought shares worth over 24,700 rupees crore net, up from over 8,400 rupees crore the month before. On the other hand, DIs who have supported Indian stocks preferred to withhold some profits, perhaps in response to FIs increasing their flow into India. FPIs are unlikely to be major sellers in the future because their previous banking selling policy has cost them a lot in the United States. Rising equity, falling yields, and falling dollar is now the market construct. The chief investment strategist at Geojit Financial Services, Dr. V.K. Vijayakumar, stated, This is favorable for the continuation of FBI flows going forward. 6. Initial public offering the primary market will continue to be active throughout the following week as more than 1,000 crore rupee IPOs are launched. The agrochemical company Dharmaj Crop intends to raise 251 rupees crore through an initial public offering, which will include the promoter's offer for sale of 35.15 rupees crore and fresh issuance of shares worth 216 rupees crore. The offer ranges in price from 216 to 327 rupees per share. And subscriptions for the issue will be accepted between November 28th and November 30th. Engineered Systems Manufacturer Uniparts India will also launch its initial public offering next week on November 30th and close on December 2nd. Through a public offering consisting solely of an offer to sell more than 14.4 million shares by promoters and investors, the business hopes to raise 836 rupees crore. The issue appears primarily aimed at providing investors Ashoka Investment Holdings and Ambedivi Mauritius Holding with an opportunity to exit. The range of prices for selling shares is 548 to 577 rupees per share. 7. Technical View The Nifty 50 has formed a doji-like pattern on daily charts as the index closed with modest gains following consolidation. On the weekly scale, a bullish engulfing pattern was formed as the index made higher highs for the sixth week in a row. The list has shut over 18,500 without precedent for its set of experiences. Positive mood was also indicated by the RSI and MACD. Given the idealism, 18,450 to 18,500 zone is supposed to assume essential part for additional potential gain towards record high of 18,604 one week from now, with key help at 18,100, specialists said. We anticipate that the current trend will continue, with Nifty first reaching 18,700 before reaching a new high of 19,000 in the event of a decline. The 18. 100 zone would provide the necessary support. Ajit Mishra stated. 8. Fan OQs according to the option data. Market participants may be betting heavily on the 19,000 mark in December after a month of failure, with crucial support at the 18,000 mark. Maximum call open interest occurred at 19,000 strike, 
which was followed by 20,000 strike. Call writing occurred at 20,000 strike, which was followed by 19,000 strike, and call winding occurred at 18,300 strike, which was followed by 18,000 strike. The maximum open interest on the put side was seen at the 18,000 strike, followed by the 17,000 and 17,500 strikes, with writing at the 18,500 strike and then the 18,200 strike. On the data front, there is a significant increase in open interest in both the call and put strikes, indicating that the market is expected to remain range-bound. ISSI Direct stated that while the highest call base is located at ATM 18,500 strike, the put base is visible at 18,300 strike. At the beginning of December, the Nifty Futures open interest remained almost flat compared to the previous series. The FI's net yearns are at quite possibly of the greatest found in most recent couple of year. Therefore, one ought to maintain a positive outlook until the put base on the Nifty holds. The brokerage added. 9. Volatility Index in November The index saw a significant decrease in volatility, falling from close to 17 to close to 13. A record low for the year. The India VIX decreased by 7.37% during the week to 13.33 levels, providing bulls with more security. Experts stated that as a result, the viability of the VIX at lower levels may continue to be favorable to the market going forward. Taking into account the fact that India is in a better position than other global indices in terms of inflation, economic growth, and corporate earnings growth, the India VIX index fell to a 14-month low of 11.88 points. This low reading suggests that participants have a low risk perception. Tirthankar Das of Ashika Stock Broking stated, The India VIX is likely to be influenced in the future by two significant factors. The budget's expectation in Q3 FI23. According to him, India VIX will begin to rise by the end of December in this context. 10. On Tuesday of next week, corporate action Vedanta will trade x-dividend.it has declared a 17.5 rupees per share interim dividend. The following are significant corporate actions scheduled for the upcoming week. Disclaimer, moneycontrol.com's investment experts' opinions and recommendations are their own, not those of the website or its management, before making any decisions regarding investments. Users of moneycontrol.com are encouraged to consult licensed professionals. Thank you for watching. For more financial news and info, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons.